Hello everyone. So this is GS Mains paper two, August two thousand seventeen, part six, and this is the last part. So the first topic, and which is the thirty fifth topic, is a glance at India's neighbourhood. So let's look at India's neighbourhood and what is happening there. So see, the thing is, India's neighbourhood, two countries where lots of problems are happening and lots of problems always happen or always persist are Pakistan and Afghanistan. So let's see Pakistan and Afghanistan. Now see the problem is Pakistan sees its relationship with Afghanistan through the prism of its relationship with India, right? So directly or indirectly, Pakistan always try to impose certain restrictions on Afghanistan, right? They they even Afghani goods are not allowed in India, such is the condition, right? Sometimes our blood boils, right? What kind of a neighborhood we are living in, right? Pakistan was once a part of our India, right? It was a part. We have we share same culture, heritage, we same shares everything is almost same, right? Then why such a I mean such kind of a hatred, right? See, I will tell you one thing. After Bangladesh war, Pakistan adopted a policy which was called "Bleed India" or "Bleed India" with a thousand cuts policy. But that particular policy is in shambles right now, right? The word is shambles. And remember this policy. The policy is called "Bleed India" with a thousand cuts policy. So now they are in a scenario which there is a word in Hindi which is called "King Kartab Vimur." That means what to do and what not to do scenario. So Pakistan has a similar case, right? So that's why they try to do different kind of a thing, but nothing works out. So what is the problem? See, Pakistan seeks a veto on Afghanistan's relations with India, which Afghans will not accept, right? Because they have their internal sovereignty to protect. So changing this dynamic requires getting rid of military's stranglehold on Pakistan's India and Afghan policy, right? So military hand has a stranglehold. See, we say that they has a democracy there, but democracy is namesake, right? It it doesn't, what do you say? Actually, what do you say? Practice there, like there is too many problems in Pakistan. If you if we talk, military has too much to operate. Military has too much control in their hands. Directly or indirectly, they are doing a lot of things, and that has to stop. Now, the thing is, again, US also cannot do or cannot impose a lot of things on Pakistan. A lot of restrictions on Pakistan. Why? There is a reason for it. US is dependent on Pakistan for supply routes to Afghanistan. Now, what are the other access routes to Afghanistan for US? So there are two access routes for uh, means access routes to Afghanistan for US. Remember it. One is Iran and other is Kyrgyzstan. So what is the problem then? Why are they so dependent on Pakistan? So with Iran, they don't have not so good relations. They have not so good relations with. Iran, right? So that's why they cannot use Iran as a base for supply route to Afghanistan. Second is Kyrgyzstan. See, US has a base in Kyrgyzstan till 2014, but that base was closed in 2014 under Russian pressure. So that's why US is dependent too much on Pakistan, and it cannot put too much restrictions or impose too much restrictions on Pakistan. So that would be a bad thing for us, or that would be a What is it? Unrealistic thing for us to accept, expect that US would do such kind of a thing. So that is the I mean that is a glance at Pakistan, India's neighborhood. Hope you like understood the whole scenario. What is happening? Lots and lots of things are happening. We'll keep on talking about it. Okay, now let's talk about Article 14. So what is it? So Article 14 is equality before law, and it ensures equality of status and parity of conditions in order that. Every citizen is able to realize her welfare or his welfare and well-being without any externally created impediment. Now, what is this externally created impediment? So, suppose you are a Bihari, right? You you are from Bihar, right? Uh, Bihar is not a word. I'm sorry for it. So, you are from Bihar, right? And you want to go to Maharashtra for work, right? Now, if uh, there is a particular party in uh, Maharashtra which creates a scenario that no no student or no student uh, say. Worker from Bihar will work here, so this is an externally created impediment, and that is not allowed in our country, and that is violating Article 14. So, if somebody asks you what is the violation of Article 14, you can give these kind of example. Anything which creates externally, anything which leads to externally created impediment, that is violating Article 14. Okay. Okay. Now let's move on to the next topic, which is employment for PWD Divyang. Uh, this is not Public Welfare Department. PWD is person with Disabilities, right? Also called the Bian. Now, according to Ban Ki Moon, who was the former Secretary General of UN, and he said, for sustainable development, it is necessary for it to be equitable, inclusive, and accessible for all, right? So, for sustainable, what 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 he said, I will reiterate it again. He said, for sustainable development, it is necessary for it. It means sustainable development. So, it is necessary for sustainable development uh, to be equitable, inclusive, and accessible for all. So, it requires inclusion of Persons with disability in paradigm of economic growth. 
So we cannot have a sustainable development if we are not including persons with um, disabilities in the paradigm of economic growth. They are a very integral part of our society and they should be given proper employment opportunities. Okay, now India is a signatory to UNCRPD. What is UNCRPD? United Nations Conventions on Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And remember again, whatever I'm going to say now, na, this will become important from prelim point of view also. So India is a signatory to UNCRPD and Incheon strategy. Incheon strategy. So uh, in, the, in the previous lecture, we have heard about Yogi Karta principle. Now remember this word Incheon strategy. Generally, UPSC train from these kind of things only. So inch, Yogi Karta principle was related to uh, sexual uh, orientation and all those things, right? And lifestyle and all those things. Now here, Incheon strategy is dealing with or related to persons with disabilities. So India is a signatory to UNCRPD and Incheon strategy, which amongst other goals aims to reduce poverty and enhance work and employment prospects of persons with disabilities. Okay. Now we have also framed an act which is called Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016. So under Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016, the reservation and government vacancies have been increased from 3% to 4% for certain class of persons with benchmark disability. Now, what are the other employment opportunities provided for PWD? Well, the thing is, they have, there is an exclusive job portal for persons with disabilities. Also, a national action plan for skill development will cover PWD also, persons with disability also. Again, there is a vocational training center for persons with disabilities under Dean They Are Disabled Rehabilitation Scheme. See, if you don't remember the name of any particular scheme, na, just add Dean They Are before it because there is a very high probability that the name will start with Dean They Are. Very like with due regards to that particular person, there is no, no offense at, the, at all. But again, generally, right now it is happening. Every scheme, more or less every scheme is starting with Dean They Are. So that way you can remember the scheme's names better. Okay, okay. So let's move on to the next one. Sino India and Dokla. So the thing is, India's policy of pursuing diplomatic measures in face of China's anger, angry rhetoric is wise. In the last two months, na, India was very silent. You, you would not have read too many what is it, drastic articles in our newspaper. But there is a news uh, paper, a news agency in uh, China, which is called Xinhua. In Xinhua, in the last two months, they, they post one rhetoric after another. If you can go to internet and you can see the Xinhua news, what they have posted. So, so that is a very wise move. That shows that we are very wise and our diplomacy is very mature, right? Okay. India and China must revert to the spirit of border defense cooperation agreement of 2013. So we had a border defense and cooperation agreement of 2013. Try to remember these kind of things. This, this is important. So India and China must revert to the spirit of border defense cooperation agreement of 2013, which laid down specific guidelines on tackling further developments along 3488 kilometer boundary the two countries share. So we have certain pacts which we made, which we made in Border Defense Cooperation Agreement. We need to respect that. India can, and, and, and again there is a lesson for India. What is the lesson? So India cannot be unprepared for another Doklam. So there is a motto. There should be the motto which we should have or the policy which we should uh, adopt for China as well as Pakistan is hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Right? Okay. Now let's talk about India Indonesia cultural linkage. I mean, this is an important topic because generally we don't talk about India Indonesia much, but this is article talks about it. And let's see what is the similarity between India and Indonesia and what are the things, what are the bad things which are happening right now in India and Indonesia. So, the top article talks about that recent developments threaten the long cherished unity and diversity in India and Indonesia. We'll talk about what are those developments. See, let's talk about Indonesia. So, Indonesia is Southeast Asia's largest economy. So, if somebody asks you what is the largest economy in Southeast Asia, so the answer is Indonesia. Now, the thing is, it is often Indonesia is often felt like a moderate oasis in an angry global desert of religious extremism. So, we are talking about ISIS, this, that, and Indonesia is predominantly Muslim country, right? Now, the thing is, Islamic country, Muslim is again not a, not a right word. But the thing is, it felt like a moderate oasis in an angry global desert of religious extremism. Why this line has been used? Because rarely you will see any any kind of a, what is it, such kind of religious extremism carried out in Indonesia. But things are changing now. So we'll see what is happening now. Now see, the world's largest and third largest democracy are home to multiple languages, ethnicities, cultural customs, and religions. So. Uh, Indonesia is the third largest democracy in the world, right? And the, they have they have lots of multiplicity and diversity, and they are possibly the best example world has of successfully generating a common identity out of seemingly 
Tell the uh, audience here, seemingly too much multiplicity, right? So we have generated a common identity out of our diversity and Indonesia has done the same. Now, other than Islam, Indonesia recognizes five official religions. What are those religions? Hinduism, Buddhism, Protestant, uh, Protestantism, uh, Catholicism and Confucian, uh, Confucianism, right? So these are the five different official religions, right? These are again tongue twisters and I'm very bad in tongue twisters. But the thing is, whatever unity and diversity we have in India, all these lynching thing is hampering it. Similarly, there are cases of operationalization of blasphemy laws in Indonesia. So that, again, that is also affecting their unity and diversity and all these incidents have to be curbed, right? Okay. Now let's talk about Maldives and Mohammed Nasheed. So Mohammed Nasheed is who? So he's the exiled from former Maldives president, right? And he was invited uh, in India by Indian delegates. So he was in India and he gave a very strong statement. He said, if you destabilize the Maldives, you destabilize the Indian Ocean. And China right now is not only destabilizing or trying to destabilize Maldives, but they are also trying to destabilize Sri Lanka, right? Humban Tota port, right? So do read about it. So that is the statement and this statement you can use it anywhere, right? So if China tries to destabilize Maldives, so they will they destabilize the whole Indian Ocean and we cannot allow that to happen, right? Very, very important. So Maldives becomes very important from every point of view, strategic, diplomatic, military, every point of view, so Maldives become very important for us. Okay. Now, the next thing is, and this is the last topic. So this is restrictions on right to privacy. So there are two, even though now right to privacy is a fundamental right, uh, very nice, very good, ha ha ha. But even then, there are two restrictions on right to privacy. Okay. So our new fundamental right to privacy has to contend with reasonable restrictions of national security and data collection for justi justifiable reasons such as ensuring that resources are properly deployed to legitimate beneficiaries. So there are two main restrictions which will be employed no matter what, whether it is a fundamental right, legal right, constitutional right, statutory right, doesn't matter at all. So two, two restrictions are first on the basis of national security, they, are, they, will, they will impose restrictions, right? Second thing is for social security schemes and everything. So that's what that's what they are saying. So there will be these two restrictions, doesn't matter whether what happens, doesn't matter what happens to Aadhaar or anything like that. So that is the whole thing. We have to uh, live with it. There's no other way around or maybe something happens in future, who knows. Okay, so I will keep until here only. So GS Mains Paper 2, August is done. I will, from tomorrow, I will start GS Mains Paper 3. And now I'm getting requests for making videos on ARC also, ethics and governance. So I will, I will try to complete it by this month. I, earlier I wanted to do it later, but now I will do it. I will do it because I also wanted to do it. So let's do it this month only. Okay, thank you.